Listen up, real estate investors, entrepreneurs, and agents. You're in the right place. Unlocking the secrets to real estate investing and entrepreneurship. Welcome to the Titanium Vault, hosted by RJ Bates III. Here's RJ. Welcome to the Titanium Vault. I'm your host, RJ Bates. Today, we're excited to have Trevor Mock with us. Trevor, how are you doing? RJ, I'm, I'm doing awesome, man. I appreciate, appreciate the heck out of you inviting me on the podcast. I'm excited. Absolutely. So, Trevor, why don't you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about what you do in investing? Yeah, so I, uh, I, I kind of have a little bit of a probably a different investing story than many people you interview here. I, I am a real estate investor. Um, I bought my first property when I was in college, but uh, I'm not a, a day-to-day investor. I'm not a guy who's flipping houses and wholesaling. So what I do today um, is I own a company called Carrot. Uh, we have thousands of real estate investors and now agents that use our platform to generate tens of thousands of leads uh, leveraging the web, including yourself. And uh, that's what we do, man. We're just fired up about helping our real estate investor and agent clients grow their businesses leveraging the web with, with uh, our methodology. And it's, it's a blast doing it. Yes. So like you said, I am a Carrot client myself. So let's go back and tell me, how did Carrot come about? How did you come up with this idea for this company? <laughs> Dude, it's so funny because uh, oftentimes, you know, when, when we're trying to find our, our path in life or our path in business, or you're trying to find your passion or, you know, everyone's like, build a business based around your passion or you know, whatever it is. There's all this, these things that you've got to find, right? Passion, purpose, and whatever it is. Um, in 2011, 2012, uh, I had a consulting company where we did a lot of consulting for bigger businesses and also some real estate investors where um, I'd help them really leverage the web to grow their businesses. Okay, we do a lot of content marketing, a lot of lead gen, a bunch of paid traffic too. Before that, I had a publishing company in the real estate market uh, where we'd go out in there and publish content and uh, and worked with a lot of real estate investors. But same thing, we got really, really good at lead gen and content marketing and conversion rate optimization. So during that phase, I, I was just completely burnt out from my consulting business in the publishing company. And I had this skill set, you know, I had this skill set where I, I own rental properties, so I was able to generate a lot of leads myself for my tenants. Like we, we never had to go out there and pay for ads to fill our our um, our properties. It'd be Craigslist and the internet. If you search, you know, blank 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 apartments for rent in city or whatever, uh, you're gonna find one of our Carrot websites, and that was one of the first websites we ever launched on Carrot. Was one for myself for my rental properties. So. As I was burnt out in this previous business, kind of not really sure what my passions were and what my purpose was. And I, I knew that I loved golfing. I knew that I loved mountain biking. I knew that I loved these things. I was banging my head against the wall trying to go, how do I biz- build a business that's actually around those? Because everyone says you've got to build a business around your, your passion. Long story short, the Cliff Notes transition here is I kind of, <coughs> excuse me, I kind of recognize that. I, number one, had to make a transition and I had to really clean the, clean my plate, right? I think anytime any of us are not really sure what we want to do or we're out there trying to do a lot of different things and you're not really pumped up about any of them possibly that it's your purpose in life, oftentimes the best thing to do is clean your plate and just get rid of almost everything so you can simplify. And so I did that. I sold my shares in uh, two of the businesses that I owned. Uh, one of them I walked away from uh, and, and another one in addition to that. And I just sat back and went, okay, I've got this skill set. I know a lot about real estate, know a lot about lead gen, and I want to build build a business from the ground up that is something that I can be passionate about, that's insanely purposeful, that we can be really, really good at, that there's a really big need in the market for. And this was, like I said, 2012, started 2013. And at that time, the previous decade, the big call to arms for small businesses was you got to get online, right? It's like... Wix, Weebly, Squarespace, GoDaddy, all your mom and pop web shops uh, popped up there where the only call to arms as far as the internet went was you've just got to get on the internet. As long as you get on the internet, you're, you're good. You're golden. The problem was everyone got on the internet. All of your competitors got on the internet. This is plumbers. This is real estate investors, agents, every type of small business pretty much. So everyone got on the internet, on the internet the easy way, you know, with a quick, simple, cheap website builder or a web development shop that just doesn't, they were trying to put something up that looked pretty, but not really performed. 
And the second problem came up that we noticed was, shoot, everyone's online, but now the big game, I feel that that next decade was to really uh, help people perform better online, help people crack through that clutter. So that's what we did. Um, came up with the name Carrot. We're really trying to sit back and go, man, what is it that a person's website should be and should do? It shouldn't be a brochure. It should be this carrot. It should be something that people latch on to. And in that moment, we saw a really, really big vision for this business and also – uh, we said, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm going to build this business in a way that's fun, that's predictable and consistent, but grows a lot, that you know fosters great leaders and builds great leaders, amplifies those leaders, has a real mission, and uh, that's what we've done, dude. So uh, from that day, we decided to launch into the real estate investor market because I, that's the market that I knew the best, and uh, uh, we've done pretty darn well the last three years. Uh, we're, we're definitely the, the dominant player in that market. And it's just been a blast, been a blast growing this company and helping people uh, do what we do. Yeah, like one of the things that I noticed, <clears throat> excuse me, when I first signed up for Investor Carrot, like you're talking about that, that the fun aspect of your company, y'all mailed me the, the carrot bud, the little stuffed <laughs> animal carrot that you send out to your clients. And, and you sent out this full package of welcoming me as a client. And immediately, like, I was hooked as a client. I'm like, <laughs> just the fact that you care about your clients, but then also, you know, the product that you're giving to investors. Because mm. I had owned two previous businesses before real estate investing. And just like you're saying, it was Wix or Weebly or Squarespace. And and those websites didn't perform. Mm. And And then it was, okay... Now we're creating titanium investments. We have to get our website out there. And I find Carrot, and I'm like, I'm blown away because immediately my online presence was better than any of my prior businesses that I had. So going into, you know, you decided to start Carrot, and and you've come up with this idea. How long did it take to create the different websites and all of the content, how long did that take before the company actually took off? Man, it's such a good question, right? Because I think that's that's one thing that as, as entrepreneurs, we put pressure on ourselves where we think we've got to accelerate so much in that first year and we almost do it at the expense of thinking long-term and being patient. And so going into this business, dude, is kind of funny because I, I was at a completely different mindset going into this business versus my last one. This one... I, I didn't do it for growing a big company, for making millions of dollars. I did it strictly at the, at the time. I'm like, man, I just want to build something that I'm really, really proud of. And I know that I did the best I could possibly do, focusing on just growing one thing for at least a year. Then at the end of that year, then I'll look at it and go, okay, do I want to do this more? Is it, is it, is it getting traction? And for me, it was more of a game. Like it was, it was less pressure on, oh my gosh, I got to get a sale. I got to get the first customers more on like, do I understand the need really, really well? Let me understand that as, as quick as I can. And then next it was like, let's build something that just solves that biggest need. So we got out a minimum viable product that was not very good, dude. If you, if you looked at our first, our first version, it was terrible. It was really, really bad, but it was, it was an advancement on what there was out there, right? Where the, the other competitors, they, they were advanced as far as they had more features and they had more designs, but they offered people 20 designs or 10 designs. And I'm like, that's a fundamental flaw because you're offering people all these designs and the only way that someone's going to choose is what they think looks prettier. You know, they, they don't know which one's going to perform better, nor does that company that's offering it to you because they've never tested that stuff. So to answer your question, the first year, dude, was about vetting the product, was about testing the heck out of stuff. I mean, I've done a ton of split testing in my day way before Carrot became involved. So that's a skill set that I've had, driving traffic and split testing. And so that's what the first probably three to four months was, okay? Putting something together, finding someone who could help me build the physical version of it because I'm not a coder. Um, and Chris, my, uh, my, co, my co-founder, he owns uh, uh, 20% of the business. He came in in that early phase and built the original product. And then, dude, get this. So this is one thing, too. A lot of people newer um, with business, they, they look and see what, what entrepreneurs are doing after things are already established, like let's say you follow the person on Instagram who's in real estate investing that's already closing 10 deals a month, right? And you see this cool lifestyle they have and you see all these leads coming in, all these deals and they're doing this and they're doing that. And they have the time to go out there and Instagram themselves walking around and doing all this stuff. <laughs> and 
what what they forget is all the hustle and all the grind that has to go in oftentimes in that front part of it that that we don't record during the process. We start recording ourselves and putting out the good stuff when we start having success oftentimes. And when when when, when we started with Carrot, literally me and my younger brother, because um, we didn't want I don't want to invest ten or twenty grand in having someone build out all the software before I knew if it was going to go in the market. Me and my little brother. We would pull away and we would manually build each website as someone joined Carrot. And it was literally someone would join. It would say, sweet, you, you will have your website. There was literally a page that said, your website elves are building your website. Um, you'll get an email within 24 hours and your website will be done. And awesome. so we hustled through the first 100 websites that way. We probably got our first you know, 40, 50, 60 clients that way because some of them had multiple websites. And then that was probably within the first eight months, around a year. So, um, you know, 2013, take you right to the it was middle of 2013 when we really started, take you to the middle of 2014. By that time, we had changed our revenue model, and we can talk about that or not, but we changed our revenue model, really understood who our client was and who our ideal client was and what they would pay, and how we could build, really build a structure around that client that was awesome. Because if we charge too little, we couldn't hire the right people to build such an amazing experience, the one that we wanted to build to make the business fun. So, yeah, dude, the first year was all about vetting the product, getting a couple people on the team, um, hustling through, grinding on, on the things that didn't scale just to verify that we had a, a solution that people wanted, honing in our pricing, um, honing in the product, the exact thing that we were looking to be the best at, which is performance. And then last, it was uh, I think we ended that year with probably three or 400 customers. Uh, we have 3,300 30, uh, 3, today. Wow. How did you get your name out there to investors to realize what Carrot was? Mm -hmm. That, that to me, is one of those things that, you know, I have a ton of people. My company is called Titanium Investments, and they go and they're like, that doesn't really say we buy houses. And I'm like, yeah, but I'm, <laughs> I'm building a brand, and that, you know, Carrot doesn't say real estate investing website. So mm -hmm. how did you get your company name out there to grow to 3,300 investors? Man, so that, that, that to me, I mean, same thing, it's, it's a long-term game, right? So w when we started, I, I had the long-term game in, in mind. I'm like, okay, I'm going to be patient. I'm going to every single week put out content. So that was the first thing that I did. Now, I'm not saying everyone should do that, but that's the first thing that I did. We didn't turn, turn on any paid traffic in this business until probably two years in. So every bit of every lead we had ever generated in the first year and a half to two years was because we were putting out weekly content. I'd sit there and write a blog post. And I try to find things that real estate investors were interested in around online lead gen or around just their journey as an entrepreneur. And I'd sit there and, and write articles. They were long form articles. They had a lot of personality in them. You could you could tell and you, you could feel and breathe and just you, you just taste our core values in each piece of content we put out. Um, the next thing was I started to uh, started, started to do little videos and do things like that. So it was all it was all based around content. And then the next thing was as soon as you get your 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 clients in man this is one mistake that a lot of real estate investors make and not just real estate investors but people in any industry is the best single way to get the word out about your brand and to build that brand is from the people who already resonate with your brand you know we're always going out there trying to go how can i find a new a new person in my marketing when we should be going okay this person that i've already found that's already happy with our service how can i go all in on that person so that person is the biggest marketing piece that i've got and so that's what we did, dude, is we just, it's like you mentioned, we're going, okay, it, we worked hard to get these clients. How do we go all in on making them happy? How do we go all in on, make, on having them feel our brand and experience our brand and experience our core values, know what we're about? So then they'll go out there and tell one, two, three, four, five, ten people. Um, and it's such a good example where you mentioned it before we clicked record in this, that you were out of mastermind and half that room was a carrot customer and half wasn't. And for whatever reason, you chose to be, speak passionately about Carrot. Mm -hmm. It's all really, really intentional. Yeah. yeah. And and what's amazing about what you just said is, is to get started, you started with giving out content. Mm -hmm. And as a Carrot customer, one of the things that you give me is content yep. to put on my website. So not only is that how you built your business, but you believe in that so passionately. That's what you give your clients as well. Um, one of the things that you talk about there is your core values. Talk about that a little bit about what are the core values for Carrot. 
Man, it's, it's funny. So I'm sitting here in my office, and half of our team is here, half the team is remote around the country. And one thing that's in common with all of our offices, we all have a big poster that's our core values poster in our offices, no matter where we are in the country. And so I'm looking at mine right here. And this is one of those those non-negotiables I had going into this business was I said, you know what? We can spend our time doing all kinds of things. And there's all kinds of ways to make money. But at the end of the day, if we're going out there just chasing dollars, if we're just chasing numbers, numbers never end. So you're always going to be shooting for a bigger number. You're always never going to be content. You're never going to be happy. So going into this business, I'm like, all right, yeah, let's let's grow. We definitely want to see if we can grow. But what are those things that we should really grade ourselves on on the day-to-day that, that deem whether we're successful or not? That we can really go, okay, if we live this way in the business and outside the business, when you, when you clock in for work and when you're at home, when you're with friends, when you're on the weekends, what are those set of values that we live in, in business and outside of business, that I can go, okay, did I live my day that way? Did I live my month that way? Did, did our company live abiding by those core values? And that's how we deem success here. So I'll go through ours and people can find ours you know, at, at our website. Just go to the about page and we list them off there. We list our mission. We have a great video that walks through it. But have fun and be different was one of them. Uh, my previous business, it was a great business, but we didn't intentionally bake fun into it. You know, it, it was kind of the, the example that you used where some businesses, their, their brands are kind of like, you know, Mark buys houses or something. Cool. Not saying you can't build fun into that, but make sure that you do have a brand and you, you have something that you can actually really intentionally make fun in your day to day. So have fun and be different is the first one. Um, always genuinely care. Dude, that's something that uh, I, I was brought up that way. Um, our team really embodies that, you know, with your, whether you're talking to our team in live chat or you see a product or talk to us on the phone. And we just really give a crap about our clients. Like that's the reason we've grown so fast because we really, really do care. Right. Uh, next, next, be a beacon of positivity and possibility. That's probably my favorite one. Uh, there's so much negativity in the world, man. And uh, that's like one of my per- purposes and missions in life is every interaction I have with people to leave that interaction more positive about themselves and the world than when they came. And we want Carrot to do the same, you know. You get those little carrot buds. You get the the different things, or you know, we 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 shoot. We had our carrot camp here a couple of weeks ago, and uh, one of the biggest things I wanted people to walk out of that carrot camp experience here at our HQ. We had eight clients out here. Was like, man, I want them to be so fired up about life, you know, when they leave here, that all the stuff that we gave them, all the frameworks, all the things that we dove and worked with them on that they're going to go out there and be that beacon of positive and possibility themselves because their family and their communities need it. Um, be adventurous, creative, and open-minded. Gratitude for everything. Deliver a wow through great service. Consistent improvement and innovation. And then last, oh, not last, uh, consistent, predictable financial growth. And last is transparency. So, yeah, people can find all those online. But every single one of those core guys, we agonized over them. And this is the third or fourth iteration of it. We we look at them every year and go, hey, does this need to change? And uh, we slightly changed it this last year. We combined two of them. And we added in one, which was consistent and predictable financial growth. Because we're looking at those values and go, man, we can live an amazing life with all these values. But there's one thing missing. We could be completely broke and not able to make the impact we want to make. Unless we have a core value of consistent, predictable financial growth. So you, you know, you talk about positivity. You also on your personal website talk about being a positive person. That's something that's very important to you. Mm. And I think that's so important considering what your company does is build websites and online. There's so much negativity online, um, especially on social media platforms. And, and as an investor, uh, the Facebook groups and, and, finding deals and talking to other investors on those groups is so important for my business, but Mm -hmm. I also see so much negativity. And so to have someone like you in our industry who has the core value of bringing positivity to the table, I think is so important for everybody to remember um, because there's so many different ways to run our businesses and there's so many different ways to make money in real estate investing And as an investor, I'm very passionate about that because I see so many people, you know, I'll see a person post a property on Facebook and five investors will rip them apart because they think the ARV is different or the rehab is wrong or or whatever. 
and and that's not necessary. Mm. It, yep. It's everybody can make money their own way, and and the negativity is it really brings no value to the table. But that positive, you know, even if you do see someone making a mistake, reach out to them and try to help them. That's a positive aspect of things. Don't you know troll them or. <laughs> you know, make fun of them on, on Facebook out in front of people. So I appreciate that core value of your company. And I think it translates across to your customers. Man, it's in to me that like, so that's, that's my favorite one, at least in this phase of my life. And that example you brought up there with, you know, someone kind of tearing into someone else, as far as the deal that they posted, if you kind of look at that deep down, you go, okay, well, why would someone do that? I mean, I know I would never do that, but what, why is it that someone would make that step? And usually someone's going to tear someone down because they want to, they want to, in, in, in other people's eyes, bring themselves up. And I think if anyone's going out there trying to, trying to, trying to climb that ladder in life by pulling other people down, it's just never going to be, you, you're never going to get where you want to go. You know, the best possible way to get where you want to go is by lifting people up, is by bringing people, you know, dragging them up that ladder with you instead of trying to buy, and trying to bypass people and, and be better than them. And that do that example is so pervasive on foot and Facebook. That's why I, I spend more time on Instagram now. It's just so positive. And you, right. you talk you talk about about positivity. Now we have the opportunity to be amazing positive influences on everyone that we're around. Um, but also you got to got to look at you know what is it that we should be putting in our brains every single day consistently to make sure that we're just exuding that positivity because it's easy to to get down when you're around the negative world that we're in. Um, there's there's a few things I do on the daily basis to really infuse positivity, and part of it's the way my office is set up, you know. So I'm not sure if there's, you know, if if you work at home, everyone who's listening to this, or if you have an office, but your office has got it's it's a big deal. Like the way you set up your workspace in 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 the place to work, whether it's your car or whether it's your kitchen table or whatever it is, be really intentional with how that changes your mood. Um, also, the, the the people around you make sure that. That they're very, very clear that they don't have permission to bring you down, <laughs> and and that's something here at the Carrot Team. You know, every, everyone's very, very clear that I, I I don't tolerate negativity. It's just I don't. Now, do do I tolerate when people are real and they want to bring up constructive criticisms about something that we can have a good debate on and and, and dive into and solve? Hundred percent. But if people People are just going to throw out negativity. I'm like, not happening. You know, it's it's not serving us. I don't want to be around it. So that's kind of the culture that I've grown is people just aren't negative here, and uh, we're a lot more constructive. So, right, and you know, for us, uh, a big part of our office culture is humor. Mm. You know, I I love hearing laughter throughout <laughs> the entire office. Um, that's when I know we're clicking. Um, mm. When yep. it's silent, uh, I'm a little bit worried. You know, it's like, what, what's going on here? You know, why aren't we, why aren't we interacting and laughing and joking and having a good time and enjoying what we do? Exactly. So one of the things I want to talk to you about is, is a, a newer, um, I guess, offering of carrot is mm -hmm. agent carrot. Mm -hmm. um, talk a little bit about that and kind of where you see that going in the future. Yeah. So f from day one, man, when when I came up when I came up with carrot in twenty twenty twelve twelve launched in twenty thirteen. From, from day one, we weren't intending on staying just in the real estate investor market, right? Because this this problem that we've talked about where um, having a web presence that helps you perform is a universal problem across all small business. I just know real estate really well. So we went into the investor market, and then we our, our next plan from day one was to go in and help agents. We're just kind of a lot later than, than we thought we would be. For a few reasons, development reasons, and also just you know we we were able to go deeper into the real estate investor market than honestly I thought we could. So the agent market is very similar to investors, and and honestly, you know my philosophy is that every investor should be an agent or should align with one, and every agent should be an, an investor or align with one. And um, that philosophy, especially in a market like today where it's really really competitive in a lot of markets. You know, where we talk with a lot of our biggest clients, should I talk with uh, one of our clients today, Kevin Roberts out of the Bay Area? He does big deals, you know, where he's buying houses for four or five hundred thousand bucks, putting two, three, four hundred thousand into them and selling them for a million and a half. Like he's doing big deals there. And, you know, we, we were we were talking about the the competitiveness, the clutter. And there's another client that I was talking with recently, Tom Caffarella. Uh, he's the number one house buyer in Boston. And the thing that both of these guys had in common 
is they pretty much liquidate most of their most of their um, marketing costs with the listing fees. So they're marketing, they're marketing, 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 and then they're able to bring over all those all these leads are getting. Some of them are going to turn into a wholesale deal. Some of them are going to turn into a flip. But then the majority of them probably aren't going to be ready to sell their house right now, and a lot of them don't want to sell. They, they might want to sell retail. And so many investors, dude, are just tossing those leads to the side because they don't fit in this wholesaling box. And so that's one of the reasons we launched uh, Agent Carrot. We're in beta right now, and we've got. We're, we're. I was talking with my dev team right before I hopped in this call. We're developing out V2 of it right now, and we're going to be pumping out another version of it here very shortly. We're going to be hitting development on it really hard. IDX will be coming soon, and. That's the main reason we launched it. It's not so we can go into a different market. It's going, okay, how do we better equip our investors to be successful in a cluttered market? And oftentimes the most successful ones are also agents because they have those two options they can bring to someone. So we're excited to bring the content marketing edge to the to the real estate agents. Dude, we're rolling out a feature here in a couple of weeks that's going to make your video marketing way, way easier and turn all of your video video marketing into great articles. We've been testing it a lot this past year and we're going, okay, how can we help a real estate agent crack that clutter in the market and really build the expertise and build that credibility in the market when everyone else is going after homes for sale, you know, Kenosha, can you go after longer tail keyword phrases like buying farmland in Roseburg, Oregon or whatever and rank really, really well with video content that is turned into an article and so we're really diving into that side of things in a big way, dude, tackling the content marketing, credibility, and cracking through the clutter with agents. So I want to go back to what you were talking about with being both an agent and an investor. We have Titanium Investments. That's me. Mm. I'm the investor. And then we have Titanium Realty, which is Cassie, who is essentially my partner, but she's the licensed realtor. Mm-hmm. And... I always say, as investors, we're problem solvers, right? Mm. People come to us with problems. Either it's a distressed property or they're financially distressed or there's there's something that – a problem that needs to be solved, and that's our responsibility. That's what we're there to do is solve that problem. Yeah. And I second everything that you said about being an agent. All you're doing is putting another – another tool in your tool belt to help solve pe- more people's problems. Mm. Um, just like you said, if they want to sell it for retail, then yeah, I mean, we have a retail agent. Here you go. Let's sell it for retail. Um, you never know where that lead's going to come from. I've gotten multiple leads that have come to Titanium Investments Carrot website that ended up just being a retail lead. They mm-hmm. needed a retail agent and we were able to solve that problem. So, I, I second everything that you say there. So Dude, in, in, one, one thing I want to toss out just to tie that just to tie that up is is I found this in my businesses over the years, and also you know the, the investors who are doing the best have found this too. Is we always need to be looking at what else you know what what other types of services or offerings can I help my prospects or clients with, right? And and the biggest problem I see where we'll have a customer who crushed it for a year and a half. They were like a great case study, then they went out of business. It wasn't because their lead flow changed. Their lead flow was the same. It was because they, they didn't adjust their offerings in ways that they could help their clients with as the market changed. So if you guys are investing right now and all you're doing is wholesaling everything, I guarantee you're leaving a ton of money on the table. And also that model might that model might com- completely flip on you in a couple of years if the market changes big time. So make sure that you're putting in these other ways of handling leads, of handling deals, of, of turning leads into profits and really helping those clients. So you're not a one trick pony. Well, I'm glad you brought that up because that kind of transitions to another part of investor care that I want to talk about. Talk about the different types of websites that you can set up as an investor. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, so we, we started with, you know, mainly stuff for house flippers and wholesalers. So that's your, your motivated house seller website, which I, I'm, I'm in your account right now and you've got a bunch of sites in there. So you've got your motivated house seller site, um, which is attracting motivated house sellers. And we do highly suggest, uh, according to all of our testing and data, which we have more testing and data on, on this topic than anyone else in the world, um, that you always have a, if, if you're going to go after motivated house sellers, uh, you should have a dedicated motivated house sellers website. One that's not, you know, also halfway cash buyers and then also lease options and all that. It just really, really um, it confuses the message for that house seller. 
And, you know, we found it performs way better when it's on a dedicated. Uh, next, we have cash buyer websites. So if you're looking to sell your properties and list your properties online, we have great property listing tools on there. Um, and, and develop a cash buyers list. Cool. That's that one. We have main company website, which is kind of like, hey, your overall branding. It's not really geared towards straight up, hey, this is the best lead gen site in the world. Um, but it's, hey, here's who we are. So it's on our business card. And here's the things that we do. Uh, we have land buyer and seller sites, note buyer and seller sites, uh, of course, agent now. Oh, boy, there's some I'm missing that we don't – there's some that – oh, we have rent to own. Do the rent to own ones are getting tons of leads all the time because those leads are easy to get, first of all. They're the, they're the least resistant lead, um, but uh, we have a lot of people using those ones. Another um, thing that I like is – I have three core markets, and that's Texas, Arizona, and Hawaii. Mm. And I'm able to go in and create a main company page for each one of those markets. And that's important because my Hawaii business, I need to speak to those buy buyers or sellers mm -hmm. differently than I need to speak to someone in Texas. And so the fact that I can have different branding – I can use different words because native Hawaiians have their own language that they like to use, and, and they expect that. When they go to a website, they expect you to be – if you're a local company, they expect you to speak that language. Mm -hmm. And so that's another aspect that we've, we've used, Carrot, is that we have a main company page in those three specific markets. Dude, that, that's such a good point. I mean, we, we could talk strategy, you know, online strategy all day long, and one, one thing – one thing when markets get hot and they get competitive that you start to see a lot of investors do is they start to expand markets because as more people are playing for the same amount of, of, of deals, then you go, okay, well, are there other markets that I can go into to expand our reach? And there's several ways you can do it. The way that you're mentioning there is sweet and awesome, and a lot of clients do that where they set up separate websites and localize them for that. And then there's also the ones that are kind of regional or national players that go in there and they've got one website that is a national website and they, then they set up location specific landing pages for each state and each city they want to buy in. And that's the cool thing, man. There's multiple strategies really depending on what your real goals are. And that's one of the things we love to do too, is just really help our clients dial in those strategies. So you're not left hand. Right. So after hearing all of this about carrot and how you're growing agent carrot and it sounds like there's going to be more carrots in the future that you're going <laughs> to create um tell me what your why is what what is the driving force behind what you do with carrot man there's 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 a few few facets to it right so I over over the past year, three years, I, I really learned a lot about myself and really learned a lot about the impact that all of us entrepreneurs have the ability to make. You know, and, and I honestly do feel that entrepreneurs are that certain set of society that that has the opportunity to make the biggest changes in this world. Um, and that's that's a big responsibility, you know. And, I, and I'm looking at it, going, man, there's so many entrepreneurs out there, whether they're real estate investors or not that are out there hustling, they're, they're out there doing things, they're out there grinding and working their 40, 50, 60, 70 hours a week, whatever you're doing, that don't have the time, energy, inspiration, passion, tools, motivation to actually go out there and make the impact they want to make. And maybe they don't even know what impact they want to make, right? So that honestly is what fires me up every single day is, yes, we have a tool that helps people generate leads online for these particular markets, and I feel we're the best in the world at it. But that to me is just a vehicle. That's a vehicle so I can get in front of entrepreneurs like you. So I can go out there and go, okay, here's this tool. We're going to make it easy. We're going to help you save time. We're going to help you have a better result. We're going to help you build a bigger business, which hopefully helps you get more freedom. And we're also going to inject this way of thinking into that to where as you build that business and as you start to get that freedom, you start to make those impacts in the world. You start to be that beacon of positivity and possibility. You start to go out there and use your business to create changes and causes. Um, whether it's donating money, donating time, going out there and, and actually solving problems, um, man, that's why I do it. You know, literally, this business is just a vehicle to tap in to entrepreneurs, so we can help you guys change uh, the way you do things, uh, see see the world from a more positive standpoint, and go out there and change the world. And that's it. And the last thing on that is 
I've always thought I was a decent leader, but it wasn't until probably a year and a half to two years ago how much of a how, how bad of a leader I realized that I really was because I was focused on leadership as me being a good leader. Like, okay, I'm someone who will get up in front and cast the vision and do this and do that. Therefore, I thought that I'm a good leader. I really learned, uh, like I said, about a year and a half ago, how bad of a leader I was because I was always focused on building myself into a good leader instead of focusing on building other people into good leaders. And that, to me, was a big change a year and a half ago in my purpose. I'm going, okay, if I'm going to make the biggest impact I want to make in this world, the way I've got to do it is by finding great leaders, building them up, fostering them, amplifying them, putting them in an environment where they can succeed so we together can make that bigger difference. So whether that's you guys as customers, you guys as listeners on this podcast, or people who actually work for Carrot, dude, that's, that's why I get up in the morning. That's why our team does too. Man, that's amazing. Um, they gave me they gave me chills. So um, I, I appreciate you sharing that. Um, one of the things I wanted to, to touch on when I was doing research about you for this interview, um, I went to your website and I noticed you have a bucket list of things hmm. that you want to do, but you don't call it a bucket list. Talk about that because I think that's just a cool moment. Just spend a couple minutes talking about how you came up with that idea for your what what you call is your your it's life a, list. It's a life list. It's a life list. It, it it's probably it probably comes back to the whole positivity thing, right? <laughs> Where I'm like, man, I don't I don't want to like put a list together that says I, I want to do this before I die. Like, what if I put a list together that is the opposite? Take that. It's the positive slant of that. Of uh, these are the things I want to do while I live. Like these are some things that can really help me um, to really live even deeper. And, um, yeah, so I created my first life list in 2010 and, and, um, man, it's, it's so funny. It's so funny. Like I'm sure people have read the book, the secret and all that kind of stuff. And I, I definitely believe in the fact of what you visualize and what you really believe is real will become real. Okay. What I don't believe about the secret is that you just do it and then magically, <laughs> magically things just happen for you. Right. That's not, that's not right, true at all. Right. So, I would highly suggest everyone sit down and I've actually got my first original uh, version of my life list here in my office. It's crumpled. I have to like every year get out a pen and because I wrote it all in pencil. So I have to like go out there and like retrace the words so it doesn't fade away. But um, just sit there and, and there's several categories that I walk through. It's like, are there any achievements you want to make? Um, you know, uh, ha- are, are there any big things in relationship you know, that you want to, you know, family, friends, relationship that you want to, you want to make sure that you do during your life, uh, places you want to go, things you want to, you want to see, um, experiences you want to have, things you want to learn and, and, and skills you want to hone, um, differences you want to make, you know, so I kind of like walk through that list. I'm like, sweet, here's some things I definitely want, places I definitely want to go before I, before I, uh, you know, while I'm here. These are some experiences I want to have. Here's some impacts I want to make. Here's some things, some achievements I really want to go after. And some of them are stupid, simple. And this is a little bit bit of advice I give everyone is I think most people <clears throat> most people put all only just the big stuff on their bucket list, like travel here and go here and you know, write a book and sell a million copies or whatever it is. I think it's really important to put fun little, easily achievable things in there too. So you can knock down some of your life list and it's fun. It's achievable. Dude, I've got one in there. It's like master a surprising cocktail. <laughs> and, <laughs> and you might be thinking like, well, why is that on your life list? Like that's pretty trivial. Um, to me, that that's one of those little things. I'm like, there's always that guy or that gal at the party that like they were, they made this, they have this cool magic trick or they are really good at jokes. I'm not good at jokes. Or they have this cocktail that like everyone wants, right? I'm like, sweet, I, w- I want to create a darn awesome cocktail that's like my cocktail, and and it's cool. And the cool thing is, yeah. if you put if you put out those little things, people see your life list and they help you achieve them. Um, I had, well, oh, go for it, man. It, the other thing about that is, is that's kind of like building a business, though. Not yep. every day is this monumental victory, mm. right? A, you mm. have to do a lot of smaller things to build to that monumental victory, and it's the same thing in your life. Yeah, I mean, for me, I, I saw you wanted to travel to some country, and I, I thought on that list, I'm like, my country's Iceland. Mm. Like, I want to go to Iceland and the Faroe Islands. Yeah, and 
I can't do that every day, mm-hmm. but you also had read 24 books in a year. Yeah. Okay, well, that's pretty simple. You mm-hmm. know, that's read two books every month. You know, okay, yep. I, I can do that. So exactly. I get it, and, and it's kind of like building a business. So stair-stepping off of this, the the life list, um, where do you want Trevor Mock to be in five years from now? Man, that's an awesome question, dude. So it's 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 funny. Um, I, I don't know if everyone does this, but we uh, – a year ago, I wrote my five-year vision. So this take this takes me through what what would it be 2021? I think it was. Um, so I'm very clear, honestly, where I want to be in five years. And the, the 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 big thing is, I think most people aren't. I I hadn't been in my past, but where I want to be in five years is this: our company, of course, is going to continue to grow. But it's not going to grow financially because we're trying to grow financially. It's going to grow because um, we're growing great leaders around us. Our team is our team is probably going to be around you know 30 to 40 people, possibly bigger. We're almost 20 right now. Um, we've actually added to our headcount faster than I thought we would this year. Um, we're going to be in multiple markets, but we're going to be making a massive impact, not just in the business that we're doing, but we're going to be doubling down on on the inspiration and the helping entrepreneurs in general run their businesses better. You guys are going to be, by that time, we're going to have a whole education center showing you how we run our business from behind the scenes, everything. Um, hopefully sooner by that point. Um, we've got three kids. We're done having kids. So uh, my family life isn't going to change a whole lot there except for uh, by that time and way before, I'm going to be way more intentional with my time. Uh, right now this year we've been going through and making sure that half of my schedule is unspoken for as I go, as I lead into a week so I can better coach up our, our team members when my schedule was really crammed. Uh, I couldn't do that. So by that time, probably three quarters of my schedule is going to be unspoken for so I can really just work on people um, and really coach people up and help you know, do, do content like this. And in general, man, I mean, there's probably going to be a couple businesses that will come out of this company by then. Uh, some software that we've been creating behind the scenes that we use in our business. So we'll go out there and help other entrepreneurs save time and build better, more purposeful businesses. Um, and yeah, we're la- I'm going to launch a book this next year, so I'm going to knock that one off the, the life list. And uh, some other stuff, man. So yeah, I, I could get crazy. I've got a 16-page vision story for 20 for uh, for the five-year one. So that's the cliff notes of it. <laughs> man, I'm gonna have to warn future guests. Like, hey, you need to go listen to Trevor's interview on his question on what he, where you're gonna be in five years because he knocked it out the park. That's all. Awesome. Oh boy, thanks, so, dude. Uh, so if for the people that are listening, if they want to contact you and reach out to, what's the best way they can contact you? I Man, pro- probably the best way is uh, on Facebook. You just go to me and find me on Facebook. Actually, let me reverse that, dude. That's not the best way because they max me out at five the five thousand friends. So I'm trying to like, I'm trying to move it over to like a fan page or something. So probably the best way, honestly, is uh, is through Carrot. Just go to oncarrot.com, ping me there, or um, Instagram. I'm starting to use Instagram a lot more now, and um, I'm on it every day, kind of showing behind the scenes what I'm starting to do. So just go over to Instagram and find me, Trevor T R E V O R M A U C H. Just follow me over there, and you can always direct message me through there. Shoot me an email at Trevor at OnCarrot.com. Well, Trevor, I very much appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to share everything that you shared with us today. Um, you, like I said, you gave me chills during the interview, and. Uh, <laughs> uh, you've definitely inspired me to be a better leader within my business. So I appreciate everything that you do for the real estate investing community uh, with Carrot. I, I think it's one of the best products out there for investors. And I appreciate you taking the time today. RJ, dude, I so appreciate the heck out of you inviting me on here. And uh, and yeah, this this is a little call to action we'll give to everyone here is, you know, all, all day long we can all look for tactics and techniques and strategies. And those are all very valuable and things that we need to do, right? You can find those things on other episodes of the podcast here. You can find them probably in forums and articles and things like that. So those things are needed. But the, the biggest deficit that I see in, in entrepreneurs today, and for some reason, especially in how you know wholesalers and flippers and things like that, is bake in more of the important stuff we've been talking about today into your business because you can flip 30 houses a day. I don't care. You could be completely miserable. So find out what is what type of business is going to make you happy. Build the business based on that. 
set up certain non-negotiables that like these are the three things. I've got five non-negotiables. Set up those non-negotiables and go, if the business ever doesn't do this, I'm going to stop the business or I'm going to change it immediately. Do that. Focus on the right things. You're going to really have a much happier and, and fruitful life. Amen, brother. Thank you for everything. Hey, thank you. All right. Talk to you soon. Thanks so much for listening to the Titanium Vault with your host, RJ Bates III. For more info and to stay up to date, visit www.podcast.thetitaniumvault.com and on facebook.com slash thetitaniumvault. If you enjoyed the episode, please rate and review, and we'll catch you next time on the Titanium Vault.